This is Dr. John Tolson, and you're listening to the Disciple Making Podcast. We're in a series called Critical Questions. The question we started last week, question number three, is this. What does Jesus do for you and me that no one else can do? And we looked and said last week at this whole area of forgiveness or pardon. Only Jesus Christ can pardon us from our sin based upon what he did on the cross when he died there for you and me. And so for that pardon and forgiveness to work, you have to ask Christ to come into your life, take up residence in you, then he applies that pardon. But just uh, in review, a couple verses. I love Psalm 103 from the Message Bible, verse uh, 10 and 12. He doesn't treat us as our sins deserve, nor pay us back in full for our wrongs. Verse 12, and as far as sunrise is from sunset, he has separated us from our sins. And then if you go over to Hebrews chapter number eight, uh, verse number 12, it says in the Message Bible, they'll get to know me by being kindly forgiven with a slate of their sins forever wiped clean. And another translation says that he remembers once he forgives us, he remembers our sins no more. And then I love the verse in Acts chapter number four, verse 12, salvation comes no other way. No other name has been or will be given to us by which we can be saved, only this one, Jesus. And so when it says salvation, it means uh, the, what comes with salvation, that needs to be connected once again with a holy father, with a holy God and being pardoned and forgiven, plus all the other benefits. Next benefit we want to look at for a moment today is the benefit of purpose. Someone has said this, a person without a clear, compelling purpose will be like a ship upon a rough sea without a rudder and without sail, drifting with the tide. You ever felt like you were just drifting through this life? I'm going to give you some quotes that have meant a lot to me over the years. Listen up. People live lives of quiet desperation without purpose. Or better put, I think for our day and time, it would be there is an aimless distraction. Someone else has said, without a clear purpose, you will keep changing directions, jobs, relationships, churches, or other externals, hoping each change will settle the confusion or fill the emptiness in your heart. You think. Maybe this time it will be different, but it doesn't solve your real problem, a lack of focus and a lack of purpose in your life. In uh, Job, uh, Job chapter seven, verse six, it says, Job says, my life drags by day after a hopeless day. And in Job chapter seven, verse 16, it says, I give up, I am tired of living, leave me alone, my life makes no sense. And then some of the great uh, noteworthy people from the past has made some of these very, very uh, insightful thoughts, but kind of discouraging too. H.G. Wells, famous historian and philosopher said at the age of 61, I have no peace. All life is at the end of its tether. The poet Lord Byron said this, my days are in yellow leaf. The flowers and the fruits of life are gone. The worm and the canker and the grief are mine alone. Thoreau, great literary genius, said, most men live lives of quiet desperation. And then Ralph Barton, one of the top cartoonists of the nation, left this note pinned to his pillow before he took his life. I've had few difficulties, many friends, great successes. I have gone from wife to wife, from house to house, visited great countries of the world, but I am fed up with inventing devices to fill up 24 hours of the day. And then Pascal, the famous French physicist and philosopher, put it this way, there is a God-shaped vacuum in the heart of every man and woman, which only God can fill through his son, Jesus Christ. Once you come to know Jesus Christ, then Jesus Christ will begin to help you understand his purpose for your existence. 
his purpose for your life. And finally, George Bernard Shaw wrote, This is the true joy of life, the being used up for a purpose, recognized by yourself as a mighty one, being a force of nature instead of a feverish, selfish little clot of ailments and grievances, complaining that the world will not devote itself to making you happy. Well, uh, we need a purpose. We need God's purpose in our life, that compelling, passionate purpose. Let me close by telling you about a friend of mine. His name's Lee, Lee Sizemore. I remember the first time I met him, I was think, getting ready to go into my junior year in college. I was home in Florida, had gone to the gym that night to play a little basketball. And a few uh, minutes after I arrived, this uh, guy rolls up in a wheelchair. He said, hi, I'm Lee Sizemore. You want to play on a little team I'm putting together this summer of college guys. And through that experience um, and, and through the basketball uh, and this team that he coached that summer, we became dear friends, friends for life. Lee Sizemore was born with a rare disease that he could not walk uh, as most children would be able to learn to walk when they're about one or a little over one or sometimes even earlier. He had to spend his life in a wheelchair. But let me tell you about Lee Sizemore. If you've ever heard of a phenomenal Bible teacher and writer, um, Beth Moore, uh, out of Houston, Texas, she's prolific in her teaching and in her writing. Lee Sizemore got to know her years ago and came up with the idea of putting her lessons on video. And so those videos were packaged and literally sent out all over the country and all over the world for women to study. So they watch the video, then they'd have discussion groups, and that was the method. But the method came, the idea came from my buddy, Lee Sizemore. Well, let me tell you one more thing about Lee Sizemore. Probably, I'm not sure now, 10 years ago, maybe less than that, I heard that he'd been sick. He lived in uh, Nashville, Tennessee, and been through multiple operations. Uh, I said, I gotta go see Lee. So I called his wife and said, is it okay if I, I come up to Nashville? So I drove up from Dallas to Nashville. I had no idea what to expect, if he was gonna be alert, in pain, or whatever. So I walked back uh, into his bedroom at home He's lying in a hospital bed, propped up on some pillows. There's a tray connected to his bed, and on top of the tray, he's got his computer. So we talked and visited for a while. I said, man, what are you working on? And here he was just literally weeks away, he didn't know, but weeks away of dying and going to be with the Lord. He said, well, Johnny said, there's a man over in Mississippi that's asked me to help him put this this deal together that is going to be able to spread the gospel of Jesus Christ to people all over the country. And I'm working on it. I've, I've got to keep working on it. This is what I do. This is why I'm here. And until he left this planet, he was still focused on that purpose of getting the gospel of Jesus Christ to every person he could get it to. Lee Sizemore. Boy, what an inspiration for me. What a friend. So, Here's my question to you. How much longer are you gonna wait and put off seeking his purpose for your life and living out that purpose? To me, the, one of the greatest tragedies that a person can go through in this life is to miss God's purpose for their life. You think about that. Thanks for listening to the Disciple Making Podcast. Check out our website at thetulsagroup.com and sign up for my weekly encouraging videos called Red Glasses Talks to come to your email every Monday morning. You can also find me at Dr. John Tolson on social media. I'd appreciate it if you'd leave me a review and share with a friend.